Hello there! Welcome to episode 6 of my tutorial series for Dwarf Fortress. Today we are going to go over the topic of trade and I'm going to introduce to you a workshop setup which will upscale this entire thing here into a dimension where you can work on a bigger project with it. Just a couple of ideas alongside with some tips and tricks that will help you to organize your stockpiles and your work orders. So first off, I want to talk about the trade topic because that's the first thing that we're going to handle here. First off, to trade, you need a broker. You will find that in the nobles and administrators menu. And here, among many other people, you will find your broker. When you are searching for a person to pick up here, you always want to have somebody who's a good appraiser because as it happens your broker will not only pick up the trading he will also be the one in charge of determining the value of items and the better the appraising skill of the person the more exact these values are therefore for me personally that's the most important aspect the Trading itself currently isn't too advanced and you don't need to have a silver-tongued persuader to make good trades. The other thing that you need is a trade depot. This is where the trade caravan will land and unpack their stuff. What's also really important to note is that the entire entourage of the trade caravan will also hang around that trade depot so if the outside environment is particularly dangerous take that into account we're going to put it inside here there is also a advanced thing happening later down the road sorry for the wrong menu let's change that but I'm going to explain that when we are at that point of the game. What's also worth mentioning about the trade depot is it requires three blocks of something, so it's a relatively costly thing. Once the broker has been appointed, we're going to release the time so the trade depot can be constructed. And there we go. So the next thing you need to do is you need to request your broker to be at the depot. You see what your broker currently is doing down here and we need to move trade goods to the depot. Currently we sadly have almost nothing what we can sell except for a couple of rough gems. So we're going to bring our gemstones over here so we have something to trade with. Now you see that five items are awaited. The broker is still drinking some. These items get automatically transported there. And now the broker moves over there. And here we go. The caravan has arrived. Now these guys are unpacking their stuff and now we can trade. On this side we see what the caravan has in store. Here we have everything we have brought up for trades. The caravan is configured to automatically determine what your fortress might need. So if you are in lack of wood, they will bring wood and as it seems here, they think that we are in a lack of metal. When you hold down the left shift button while moving the mouse wheel you can scroll faster like that it's a real lifesaver so the very first few trades that arrive at my fortress i personally love to buy me some food and drink maybe some tools if you want to if you forgot something but the most important things for me are food and drink. The other thing that you might want to invest into are cloth types that you don't have. There are three cloth types in the game. You want something out of fabric, like pigtail. You want something out of wool, like here. And you want something out of silk. I'll be explaining why in another video when it comes up. It will come up soon. The other thing here, we're going to buy yourself some meat or... or whatever you want. You can also buy some leaves and fruits or whatever. We're going to buy some meat because my fortress is notoriously low on food. That will help them. We're also going to pick up some of these fruits here and now we put trade value in. Down here you see the value of the goods you tried to buy 
and you see here how much the trader would lose right now and how much weight they can carry. So we're packing up our gemstones until the trade is beneficial, turns green. You can also try to trade while it's yellow. Sometimes you get lucky. Here's where the persuasion skill gets into play. And last but not least, it's worth mentioning that whenever you have something, you can also offer it as a gift for the goodwill of the faction. These people here come every autumn. They are the trade caravan which comes from your civilization's mountain home. They will always come. Sadly, somehow the diplomacy part bugged out. You can also ask them to bring you certain goods. So if you're lacking something in particular, you can ask the upcoming caravan to bring that as well. I don't know why they bugged out. Sometimes they do that. Good. So that's trading in a nutshell. There's really not much more to say except for after the trade, don't forget to unassign your trader. You can also request anyone, but I'd recommend to do this always with your broker. He gets experience and that's a good thing. Okay. That's how trading works. You can work with it and there's not much more to explain. Let's move over to the workshop part of this video. What we got here is all nice and dandy, but it is a small scale operation and will leave us unhappy rather sooner than later. So I took the liberty of going up ahead with this one and I dug out a little bit of something. So this blueprint here, is one section of the workshop. I put it right next to the city to be, and when we go downstairs, I copied that once, and then I went here for a couple of extra levels. Here I left one out voluntarily because I wanted to have a blank level in between. Like I said before, leaving a blank level in between is a good habit, and it, you, you will be surprised how often you think, oh, that's something I have forgotten that can go in here. And that's why we're doing it. So this section here is going to be the workshop for the woodworkers and the crafts dwarfs. Down here, we will bring up the stone workers. This is stone workers storage. Again, stone workers storage, an empty space in between. And here is where we're going to do our metal works and the smelting business. I have left it out open here what comes later because I don't know what we're going to expand into. So the workshop types that we're going to go into today mostly will be the stone workers and the woodworkers and the crafts dwarfs because these are at the beginning of the game the most important parties. I'm going to fast forward time here a little bit so we have these dug out and we can work with these and I can explain that layout a little bit more thoroughly. And here we go. That's enough of a change. So up here we have now the area where I want my carpenters to work. So the first thing that we're going to set up for ourselves are, of course, carpenters workshops. The other thing that will be living down here are the crafts dwarves. So we're going to give them their workshops here. Of course, the dimensions and the style of your personal workshop areas, you can totally define that for yourself at home. I really just want to give you an example. Since the woodworkers will be sitting here, I'm going to declare this entire area here now as my wood stockpile, the real wood stockpile. So we're going to tell these guys upstairs there that the big stockpile is now going to take from the small stockpile. There we go. And we can also just dismantle that workshop as well as this one because we don't need them anymore because that business is now getting done downstairs. It's much better to centralize your workshops like that because you just get more done. We are going to expand these now and the wood will be stored downstairs now. Another important thing that I want to set up here is a bowyer. You want to have every type of workshop at least once in your fortress due to the uh, reason that sometimes dwarves in your fortress want to make things out of certain artifact reasons. I'll be talking about artifacts in another episode or on another occasion. 
All right, so we're now done with this setup. Well, almost. There's one thing left. We're going to declare this area, or well, not the entire area, but this area here to furniture stockpile. So all the finished furniture can be stored there. And don't forget to expand them later. The other thing that we're going to do here is we're going to declare this area here, a smaller one, for the finished goods. This is where all the mugs and all the other things that we produce will get stored at. So at this part here, you can now go for various things, stuff that your crafts dwarves might need. Might it be leather or cloth, or you might want to have bone, which you find here in the refuse menu, which is a little bit weird, but with you can also work with bone, you can also work with shells. So this area here is meant to store all the goods that your crafts dwarves will need. The other thing that we're going to do now is we're going to dig ourselves staircases downstairs here, like that. And we're going to make these on the other side there as well. You can put these staircases wherever you want to, but I highly recommend you to have staircases in the vicinity of your workshops. Something like that is also a nice idea. So your workers can have an easy access to the areas up and below. So this will be for our stone workers. So the stone workers are typically depending on the projects in your fortress one of the most sought after and most stressed out dwarves in your fortress so keep in mind for this area that you probably might want to reserve more spots that's why i have constructed the system uh, in a manner that it's easy to get in new bays for new workshops you can also totally forego this entire building style with those little bays you don't have to use that. I use this because it's easier to contain people that want to create an artifact and fail at it. A quick thing up ahead so you understand the construction uh, idea a little bit better. Dwarves sometimes want to create artifacts. If they fail at doing so, they go uh, immortally insane. They will then either cease drinking and eating and die peacefully, that's sad, or they'll straight up go berserk and kill people or get killed in the process. Since this is either way, way a very, very traumatic, traumatizing experience for everybody involved, you can just set up a door inside. And if somebody happens to go crazy there, you can just lock the door and then you wait until he has uh, died from natural causes and nobody has to worry about that. That's the idea behind this construction uh, layout here. Another thing that you can do is you can also construct a staircase like here instead of making doors if you don't think you need that. You can also make staircases making it terribly easy for your dwarves to go back and forth between the different workshop levels. Here, we're going to set up storage areas for specific types of stone. Don't make the mistake to just uh, flag it like that. This will not be really effective. What we want here is we want to store a specific type of stone. Here, I have already noticed that this whole place is littered with phyllite, and we're going to configure this stockpile exclusively just for this one stone type. So if we want to work with that stuff, we have plenty of it around. Hauling boulders is a really nasty task. Boulders are heavy and they slow down the dwarves in question and therefore you want to have it uh, done in a professional way. If you click this barrel icon, you can also configure how many wheelbarrows are supposed to be assigned to some place. We have thieves? Jeez. Yeah, well, not that important right now. Let's ignore that. Usually I don't. So, wheelbarrows. As soon as you start changing this default setting to something else, 
Or one, you define how many wheelbarrows will be assigned to this uh, work spot, but also you define that three people are now going to work at this stockpile at once and not more than that. Before that, literally the entire fortress might decide that this whole stockpile isn't full yet with billite boulders, yet let's do something against that. This way, you make sure that only three people will pack their wheelbarrows and cart these things around. Very important little setting. Of course, this also makes it so that you will need wheelbarrows. So, let's go into the work order menu and order wheelbarrows. Ideally, I'd recommend you to make them out of wood. It's the most um, easy to acquire material and the other option would be metal. But smithing, well, we'll cover that in another day's episode. So we're ordering wheelbarrows now. I want this fortress to have always five empty wheelbarrows available, and that's that. So let's head back upstairs and make sure that we're going to chop some trees and install that other tr uh, door that I wanted to have here so our fortress isn't as open anymore. Okay. So with this uh, little setup there, we have now defined that we have working materials in the vicinity of our stone workers. And since I'm going to define this stockpile here for furniture as well, we also have a huge area where we can stockpile the finished project, uh, products of our workshops. With the staircases that are interspersed everywhere, we have a easy and quick way for our workers to go back and forth between the different stockpiles and all in all with that setup you will have a pretty efficient and quick working um, fortress of course you can min max and improve on on every design but uh, i personally find this one pretty effective and fun to play with so we got here even more room for the stone workers. I left up here even more room for the stone workers, mainly because there are various stone types. So for example, I realized down there we got obsidian. So we're going to set up a stockpile zone for obsidian. And don't forget the wheelbarrow defining. And this way we can go for a massive project haul that stone that we need there so our stone workers just need to get to the stockpile where they can get their stuff at. If you want to make lots of blocks or other building material, it is highly recommendable to also put a stockpile zone here for bars and blocks. Here, since it's the stone workers area, I'm going to define only the stone ones, so that's that. Also, what becomes quite important once you have these whole businesses up and running are bins. Bins are where you store blocks in and many other materials. Without bins, your bar's stockpile will be a ruddy mess. So you're going to want some bins as well. I don't know, have we already ordered these? No. So bins. We want to go here again for the wooden bin because the other op the other option here would again be metal and we're not there yet to work with metal. So empty bins are as important as our rock pots and every other type of container, but they aren't as important for survival as uh, rock pots or barrels would be. Now we got now everything together to organize our workplaces. So before I end this episode, I want to introduce a couple of little tricks that I personally love to do here. So for example, we are currently working with rock blocks. If you want a uniformist look in your fortress, this is pretty bad because the blocks inherit the color of the stone that they've been made of. Here, if we'd be using phyllite and obsidian right next to each other, that would re really look bad. So we're going to delete this job and remake it. So here we go. And let's redo the rock block job. Here, I want to tell my stone workers now 
to make that block out of a very specific stone. So first you select that magnifying glass and now we get to select what kind of stone we want to use. So I think I'm fancying those black floors so we're going to go for obsidian here and now Notice that it changed into make obsidian blocks, and now we tell them to make us a steady stockpile of not less than 300. So now my stone workers know that up until we have a total stockpile amount of several hundred obsidian blocks, we're not going to be happy with that. This setting can be applied to any job. So here we can now tell our stone workers that our rock tables are supposed to be made out of um, phyllite in the future. Just keep one thing in mind. I'll show you here. If you change a already existing job, you successfully made it so that it will be phyllite. But if you look into the details, this thing here is no longer working. So you need to delete the condition and replace it with the actual phyllite condition. Otherwise, it won't work but apart from that you can totally redefine every one of your old orders just like that just don't forget to um, reconfigure that when it comes down to mass orders we are also going to have our mechanics live here because mechanics are usually working with stone so we're going to give them also a few bays because you know why not and we're also going to order a couple of other rock blocks. And these will be specifically made out of phyllite. So we'll have a gray flooring available as well if we want to. I really like to have the variations. And while we're at it, I'm also going to tell my people that my doors are pleased to be made out of phyllite as well, because I want to have gray doors and no black doors. You see, with this uh, manipulation, you can go really deep into how your fortress is being set up. And that's all in all a really good thing that is worth being uh, held up and also we have now everything we require for the further setup of our fortress we can now order everything we want we can now store really a lot of things the only um, things that we don't have currently are highly specialized goods which I will be covering in upcoming episodes because the other industries are all more specialized and we need to bind a couple of things in between that aren't as clear as before. So before I leave you here, a few thoughts. I have left these areas open for the stone workers so I can store various different stone types that might I that I might find on my adventures there. You might find a nice color that you just want to use in your fortress therefore that's your way how you can do it and that's why i left these open experience has shown me that usually boulders are the stuff that i store most there's also a way how to store your boulders in a less spacious way I'm gonna expl explain that later in the series if you are curious how you want to how you can do that because you don't like that kind of uh, storage check out quantum stockpiles Okay, so I'll leave you guys with that. I feel like we made a nice piece of progress. That's in my book, a nice and tidy workshop. And in the next episode, we will be continuing con in constructing the city and setting up other industries that are a little bit more burdensome. I have a couple of things on my mind. So thanks for watching, drop me your comments and Feel free to leave me a thumbs up, consider subscribing, I'd be delighted to have you guys check out also all the other tutorials for Dwarf Fortress that I made. There's a lot of stuff playlist wise in the description box below. At this point I want to thank yet again my many supporters for all the help that you do. I really deeply appreciate you folks and if you want to join in and find out more, check out Patreon, Paypal and buy me a coffee as ways and means to do so. I thank you for watching this, hope you're going to check on in into the next episode and have fun with your fortresses, strike the earth, see you there.